Well, I think we're getting to a point now, Brian, where, you know, the world is bullish on pessimism. Um, if you look at it, I mean, really, like every dire scenario at this point is priced into the market, right? Whether it's a 75 basis point rate hike at this point, um, you know, whether it's an inflation doesn't go down uh, over the course of the next couple months. So I think at this point, you're getting to a point where it's really been a sentiment driven sell off. I mean, because let's face it, yesterday we had the 10 year Treasury down. Yet markets still sold off. So I wonder at this point, have we priced in uh, essentially the fact that interest rates are going higher? And your biggest risk here is we start to get some positive news, you know, whether it's earnings surprises. And we know we had a pretty good quarter for earnings anyway. Um, you know, maybe we ratchet down the conflict in, in Eastern Europe. So there's, there's a lot of things that can happen at this point, I think. I think the, the market's discounting isn't discounting enough any positive news that we could see over the next couple of months. Long story short. Well, what if we get, we just talked about the Fed, what if we get a Fed that flips? I know they're saying that in June and July they're going to raise rates, but the market has already adjusted for that. If you're waiting for the Fed to raise, to make a move, <laughs> I got some yeah. beachfront property in Arizona, Lake Havasu, that I want to sell you. <laughs> so the market already knows this. What if in the second half of the year, Ryan, they flip, they get more dovish, indicate they're not going to raise rates, you know, six, seven, eight times. What then? Well, that's where you can have a massive melt up here, right? Because look, nothing's changed, Brian. Um, you know, we still have investors sitting with trillions of dollars in cash sitting on the sidelines. And you and I know in an inflationary environment, the worst place to be is sitting in cash because you're earning nothing on your money. So money has to be productive somewhere. And it's a great point there because the one thing about America is, look, it's all about filling a need, supply and demand. So if we think that these supply chains aren't going to get fixed, you know, I have some lakefront property I like to sell you <laughs> because the reality of it is in America, we figure these things out. Right. I mean, think, take the masks. You couldn't get a mask yeah. when the pandemic started. Within two months, you know, we had abundance of masks wherever you went. You could grab a mask. So I think any supply chain issue is going to get fixed over the next 12 months, 24 months. And that's very, very deflationary. So I think the big surprise here can be that inflation does come down. Um, the Fed does become more dovish. And yeah. again, it's risk on again. We're back to the races. So you kind of want to take advantage of the fact that we've got these low prices right now because it's not going to last forever. Yeah. No, speaking of low prices, can we, I don't know, guys, if we could throw Luna, which is uh, the, the stable coin offshoot up. And I'm asking this for a reason, Ryan. I just tweeted this out. In 2001, we had sketchy internet stocks that were highly valued, then they went to zero. In 2008, we had mortgage lenders and some big banks that were sketchy, we found out that were high flyers and then went to zero. Right now, we've got sketchy crypto. Luna, it's at zero right now. I mean, I know it's still trading and you can go back to the, what is that, the 10,000th decimal point. But Luna, <laughs> which was a super high flyer just a couple of months ago, is now a zero. Does things like this, these sort of obscure corners or even not even that obscure corners of the crypto market, do they matter to the equity markets? Is it a, is it a pain trade? Is it a, is it a cash raising trade? Do you care? I think, no, I think it's a good point because we have seen an unwinding in the crypto market and it's been a lot of pain, no pun intended. That's my last name. And I think that is the problem here, Brian, is there's a lot of leverage in that market. And it's very indicative of, of these other bubbles that we've seen in the past. And you know, you've seen this at like places like Coinbase, where you can borrow against your Bitcoin. Um, you can borrow against a lot of these coins. You're getting like 25 percent you know, interest rates and you get paid in these these other cryptocurrencies. So someone's borrowing those cryptocurrencies on the other side. They're speculating with that money and so on and so forth. So it's just like the biggest casino we've ever seen. And I think a lot of that, that leverage was clearly unwinded over the course of the last couple of days. And that clearly bleeded over uh, to the equity markets. So, you know, I think there could be and there's obviously going to be not obviously, but I think there's going to be more pain there uh, as well, because at the end yeah. of the day, like these other stable coins, we don't know what they're backed by. You know, we, there's no clarity around if they're backed by real assets I, you know that that one coin was backed by yeah. more bi bitcoin <laughs> you know it's so it's just like a it's just like a yeah. huge house of cards